I want to talk to you today about a beautiful piece that uh, just appeared in the New York Magazine. Uh, a very excellent writer by the name of Stephen Hall uh, offered new hope to infertile women who have undergone PGS, pre-implantation genetic screening, which recently has also uh, received a new name, pre-implantation genetic testing for unemployed or PGTA. Uh, this new name is kind of meant as a new beginning uh, for a procedure which in recent months and years uh, has faced increasing skepticism, especially uh, from us here at CHR. CHR has probably been uh, the leading and most vocal uh, opposition to the increasing use uh, of PGS slash PGTA uh, because we feel that uh, both biologically and practically clinically PGS not only does not fulfill its promises of improving IVF outcomes but it actually may reduce pregnancy chances uh, for some women particularly uh, adversely affected uh, obviously women who produce very few embryos and therefore cannot afford false diagnosis and uh, even uh, less opinionated uh, people about PGS including uh, the current president of the American Society for Reproductive Medicine Dr. Richard Paulson from USC in Los Angeles uh, are in uh, current times assessing that uh, the false positive rate, in other words, the embryos that are declared to be abnormal when in reality being normal, may be as high as 40%. Think about that. This may mean that uh, up to 40% of embryos which are tested and which could be safely transferred to a woman are not transferred and often uh, disposed of. Uh, so, uh, because of that, we here at CHR have been quite opposed to the utilization of PGS. And just a few days ago, New York Magazine came out with this uh, story here, even presented at the cover of the magazine. And what makes this story uh, so special is not only that it is the first media presentation of the whole disapproval uh, that PGS uh, has been facing increasingly in the recent times. But uh, the writer did it in a wonderful and very positive way because instead uh, of uh, saying, look how terrible uh, this procedure is, uh, which has resulted in the mistaken disposal of so many potentially healthy embryos, uh, he turned the story around and he came actually out of it with a positive message and that positive message uh, is uh, even on the cover when uh, the magazine says tens of thousands of women thought they couldn't have babies but what if they could and what is meant by this heading is the fact that many of these embryos uh, which until very recently were automatically disposed of, now suddenly can and are being transferred. We are very proud here at CHR to have been the first ones to do that. Uh, we started offering on an experimental basis uh, the transfer of so-called unemployed chromosomally abnormal embryos already in 2012 five years ago. By 2013, two women had given birth to healthy babies. When a few colleagues here in New York joined us in a small informal consortium and they also started transferring such embryos. And uh, by 2015 at our annual ASRM meeting uh, in October, I was therefore able uh, to present already five live birth or 
uh, advanced pregnancies of women who had uh, such embryos transferred uh, and all of these pregnancies were determined to be normal. Less than two years later, we now know that close to a hundred healthy babies have been born so far. Very recently, actually a group of proponents of PGS published a very important paper. Uh, this was the largest group of so-called mosaic, or as we used to call them, unemployed embryos, that was transferred. Uh, and in this uh, quite large group, roughly 140 embryos were transferred. Uh, these authors reported amazingly high clinical ongoing pregnancy rates. Indeed, in women whose embryos had either trisomies or monosomies, those are the two most frequent chromosomal abnormalities uh, we find in embryos, the ongoing clinical pregnancy rate was a whopping 50%. Imagine that. The test, in other words, in helping to determine whether a given embryo should be discarded or can be transferred was as good as a coin flip, 50%, head or tail, same thing. So this paper uh, contributed greatly uh, to increasing skepticism over the procedure of PGS. Uh, Stephen Hall, in this, uh, in, in, in this article in New York Magazine, really very fairly described both sides of the controversy. He interviewed literally everybody who had something important to say, scientifically, uh, all over the world. He quoted investigators from the US, from Europe, from Israel. Uh, he spoke to everybody who ever had published uh, an important paper uh, on this subject. And as already stated, he presented his conclusions uh, in, in a very positive way. He did not condemn uh, what happened. He presented it as a new opportunity, and this is what increasing knowledge, in this case, really offers. Patients who have been told up till now that they could not get pregnant because all of the embryos were always unemployed, chromosomally abnormal, they should know now that this was the wrong information. There is no such thing like a woman having only abnormal embryos. There's only one thing that could lead to those results, and that is an inaccurate test. Nature doesn't work in 100% or in 0%. Nature is always a gradual process. And therefore, if uh, you have a patient uh, who has had only so-called unemployed or mosaic embryos, don't discourage her from trying again. Uh, if you are a patient who had repeated cycles and uh, you were told that all of your embryos were abnormal, ask if those embryos are still cryopreserved. Because if they are, there is a good chance that at least some of them can still be transferred safely.